fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. You must also know I don't carry a gun. Yeah, we know that. But we're taking no chances. I don't quite understand what you expect to gain by this holdup. Most preachers are very poor, and I'm one of the poorest. We know that too, Reverend. But maybe today you're not so poor as usual. What do you mean? You've been out riding the circuit for two weeks now, Reverend. I reckon you must have collected quite a bit of money for that church you plan to build in Gold City. Oh, not a lot of money. $742.30, to be exact. Well, that'll do nicely, Reverend. Supposing you just hand it over. Quiet like. I'm sorry, but that's not my money to give you. In that case, I guess we'll have to use force. Now climb out of that buggy. I don't see why you're so dead set against having a church in Gold City. It's the most sinful town in the territory. The town suits us just as it is. The money isn't in the buggy. You must have it on him. Get it. Hand it over, Reverend. You're mighty brave with that gun in your hand. You use it against women and children, too? You listen to this psalm singer. He sounds like he wants to fight for the money. All right, Reverend, if that's the way you want it. I don't have to shoot you to take it away from you. There's an easier way. Put up your dukes. If I win, I get to keep the money? Reverend, if you knock me down just once, I'll retire to an old lady's home. Ah, cut your bragging and get that cash. Sure, sure, just as soon as I've mussed up the Reverend a little. I'm waiting, Reverend. So am I. Oh, I get it. You don't want to strike the first blow, huh? All right. I'll do it for you. Fancy Dan here. You had enough? He said if I knocked you down once... Why, you low-down, mealy mouth Bible spot? That's enough, Reverend. Let me get... Hold it. Get open up your big mouth and show off. Just because a man's a preacher doesn't mean he can't fight. We've played enough games, Reverend. Hand over that money. If you don't, we'd just as soon shoot you as not. You know that. All right. Take it. But I warn you, I'm not going to rest until I get it back. That money belongs to the Lord, and his wrath is mighty. Reverend, if we were scared of the wrath of the Lord, we wouldn't be holding up a preacher. Come on, I'm getting tired of listening to this psalm singer. Let's go. You better travel far, gentlemen. The arm of the Lord is long. Hallelujah, Reverend. Don't ever forget the Eighth Commandment. Thou shalt not steal. Don't you forget it. Let's go. Come in. Boss. Howdy. Want a new headline for tomorrow's edition of your paper? Such as what? Such as Reverend Randy Roberts, held up by two masked outlaws, robbed of $700. You sure he had no idea who you are or that you work for me? With those masks we wore, how could he? Roberts is nobody's fool. That's why I consider him a dangerous man. Well, if he's so dangerous, boss, why'd we bother to rob him of a measly $700? Hardly seems worth a while. It's not the amount that's important, Wolf. It's what he intended doing with it. You don't figure one poor preacher is going to put us out of business, do you? Not Roberts alone. But if he gets enough followers, we're in real trouble. I've made this a wide open town, and I want to keep it that way. There's more and more free spenders pouring in every day. And as long as they keep throwing their money away in my gambling houses and dance halls, we'll all make big profits. Well, I don't see how the Reverend can change that just by building one little church. A church is a rallying point, that's how. There's plenty of God-fearing folks in this town. All they need is a meeting place and a leader, and they'll start clamping down on us. Don't worry, boss. That church is never going to be built. You bet it isn't. Now, you keep your eyes and ears open. If he raises any more money, I want that too. The whole city belongs to us, and no preacher is going to take it away from us. You returned quickly, Tato. Did you find out much in Gold City? Me learn plenty, Kimasame. Bad reports we hear all true. 
What makes you so sure? Me walk all over town, keep eyes and ears open. There are many gambling houses, dance halls, and saloons. Have you any idea who owns them? Me stopped in cafe, listen to talk. Seems biggest man in town, newspaper editor. Him own many buildings. Me buy a copy of paper at Tell Plenty. I should say it does. Mostly advertisements for places where men can throw their money away. Surely there are some people who want to oppose this kind of thing. There are plenty, Kimasabi, but them not organized. Only man in town who fight back is young Reverend Randy Roberts. Him try to close evil places, but him not get very far, him not carry gun. Randy Roberts? Yes, I've heard of him. He's a circuit preacher. He made quite a fine reputation for himself back in Kansas. Him trying to build church. Yesterday, him robbed by two masked men. Them steal church money. So they'd stoop as low as that. Where's Randy now, Tonto? Him leave town early this morning, say him hunt thieves, and get money back. Build church no matter who try to stop him. I like his spirit. He sounds like a man who will fight evil no matter how great the odds. I wonder which direction he headed. You want to find him? Yes, I'd like a little talk with him. plenty of territory. It may be hard to track down. Well, he's bound to come back to Gold City sooner or later. Maybe him not find what him look for. Let's hope that he doesn't, at least not yet. And what we do? We'll head for Gold City just as soon as we've eaten, Tonto. We look for Reverend Roberts there? Reach! Keep your hands away from your guns. If you're looking for Reverend Roberts, you don't need to look any further. You found him. Well, uh, hello, Reverend. Why the gun? Because guns are all you outlaws seem to understand. Now, there won't be any trouble if you'll just toss me the church money you stole from me yesterday. We not steal money from you. I can't prove it was you. Both your faces were too well covered by masks. But if that big white horse I saw back there is not the same one I saw yesterday, it's a twin brother. I assure you it's not the same one, Reverend. I'm sorry, but your word's not good enough for me, mister. You may be wearing a different mask, but your bill's just about the same as the fellow who robbed me. Now, where's the money? With the men who stole it from you, wherever they are. You won't cooperate, huh? All right, I'll take you back to town and turn you over to the sheriff. And if we refuse to go? I have a gun on you. But would you use it? What makes you think I wouldn't? I've always heard that the Reverend Randy Roberts does his persuading with words, not bullets. You seem to know a good deal about me. Enough to be convinced that you wouldn't shoot two innocent men. You be careful, Kimisami. If the Reverend really means to use that gun, all he has to do is shoot once in the ground in front of me and I'll stop. You're quite right, mister. I wouldn't use it. It isn't even loaded. I would have been disappointed in you, Randy, if it were. You're a funny kind of outlaw. I've already told you, Tonto and I are not outlaws. Prove it. That gun really is loaded. You have the drop on me if you want to use it. All right, I believe you. You're no outlaws. Even with my mask? I don't judge men by what's on their faces. I judge them by what's in their hearts. And I see nothing bad in yours. This is a mighty handsome weapon you carry, friend. I wouldn't have handed it over to you so willingly if I didn't know that most preachers were notoriously poor shots. Is that a fact? Well, you learned to shoot like that. Ever hear of Rifle Roberts? The gunman who was killed years ago in a Denver holdup. It was my father. I reckon I learned to shoot from him. Your father outlaw? I'm afraid so, Tonto. When I was a boy, my mother and I saw enough shooting and killing to last us for the rest of our lives. For years, I watched the suffering that my father and men like him caused innocent people. I guess it was what made me turn to religion. Somehow, I wanted to make amends for his crimes. You couldn't have picked a better way, Randy. I'd like to think so, but right now, I'm getting nowhere fast. I'm up against men worse than my father, and even with the Lord's help, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to beat them all alone. You're not alone any longer, Randy. Tonto and I are on your side. Say, thanks. I sure need you. Look, why don't we pick this stuff up and get on back to my place? We can talk better there. You'll excuse me if I feed Esmeralda first. She gets very impatient if she isn't fed on time. The bird makes funny, funny noises. You have it long? Ever since I can remember. She's the only thing my father ever left me that I cared to keep. Her no words? Well, just a few that my father taught her. I, 
I don't encourage her to use them anymore. They sound rather strange in a preacher's home. <laughs> Me like to hear Bird talk. All right, Tonto. Dad taught her to only answer to certain nonsense syllables. Esmeralda, abracadabra. Well, that's plenty good. Uh, Alakazam. Reach, I said. Bird, plenty smart. Her say more? No, I'm afraid that's her entire vocabulary, Tonto. I've been trying for years to teach her to say something more suitable, like uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> but she refuses to learn. I reckon she's just an outlaw at heart. It's too bad she isn't smart enough to give us the names of those two crooks who held you up yesterday. Well, I know one man who could give us their names. I'm sure of that. Frank Ferris? How did you know? Tonto did some investigating in town. He also brought me a copy of Ferris's newspaper. Well, then there's no need my telling you why I'm so sure he's behind all my trouble. Supposing Ferris were smoked out into the open as the man who's trying to prevent organized religion in Gold City, wouldn't that destroy a great deal of his power? Mister, it'd put every decent citizen in this town behind me. But how are we going to expose him? There may be a way. The one thing he seems to fear most, Randy, is that you'll get your church built. Apparently, he'll stop at nothing to prevent it. He certainly stopped at nothing so far. If he thought that you had the money to build your church, he'd have to go into action again, wouldn't he? Yes, but where am I going to get the money? You're not going to get it. We'll merely let him think you have. Tonto? Huh? Do you think you could pose as the Indian servant of the fabulously rich uh, Abner Doolittle? Abner Doolittle? Who him? Merely a figment of our imagination. But he also may be the man who finally gets Randy's church built. Hey, boss. I'm busy, Wolf. I have to prove these plans for the new gambling house. I know, but there's an engine outside. Wants to take out an ad in the paper, a full-page ad. Good. If he's got the money, let him do it. Well, he's got the money, all right, but I just thought you'd want to know this ad is for raising funds for the Reverend's new church. Why does an Indian want to take out a full-page ad for a church? I don't know. He was kind of cagey. Send him in to me. I'll handle him. And be polite. Mr. Ferris, I'd like you to know Henry Brightfeather. Mr. Brightfeather, it's a pleasure to know you. I'm glad to know you, too. Wolf, pull up a chair for Mr. Brightfeather. Sit down, won't you? Here you are. Thank you, Wolf. We don't often get an order for a full-page ad, Mr. Brightfeather. That's why I want to take care of you personally. Now, that's very kind of you. I understand you want to help raise funds for a church in Gold City. Now, that's right. The man who sent me him have plenty of money. Hear many good things about young preacher. Want to help him build church. Who is this man who sent you? You know a fellow named Abner Doolittle? Abner Doolittle? No, I can't say that I do. I'm plenty rich. Him live in East. Believe plenty much in religion. Him come west to help Reverend Roberts. Send me ahead to make arrangements. I see. And when does this Mr. Doolittle arrive in town? Me not sure. Him say him meet me at Reverend Roberts' house uh, this afternoon, maybe. And he'll have the money for the church with him? Enough to start building. Rest of money come in when people read ad in paper. Mr. Brightfeather, I can't tell you how happy I am about all this. Our town needs a church, and I plan to make one of the largest contributions myself. You just tell my typesetter what you want the ad to say, and he'll print it for you. That good. Me leave ad money with you? I wouldn't hear of it. An ad for such a worthy cause will be glad to print it free. Well, that's very generous of you. Oh, uh, by the way, I presume you'll be going to the Reverend's house now to wait for Mr. Doolittle. Well, that's right. Me be there. Give my regards to Randy. And we'll set the ad up on the biggest type we have. Ah. Uh. Take his ad, boss? I pretended to. What else could I do? You ever hear of a rich old geezer named Abner Doolittle? No, who's he? Some crackpot who's putting up the money for that ad. Seems to be hipped on religion. Uh, one ad can't hurt much. It's worse than that. This Doolittle fellow's on his way here now with enough money to start building the church. He's turning it over to the Reverend this afternoon. Is that all? Well, don't you worry about that, boss. As soon as he gets that money, Jed and me will see that he turns it over to us. I'm going to see what I can find in our files about that Doolittle fellow. If he's as rich as the Indian says, we must have some record of him. While I'm doing that, I'll tell you what I want you and Jed to do. Hey, I think Ferris took the bait. Look. You're right. Looked like someone coming toward the house. I see them now. There's two of them. They're the same two who robbed me yesterday. They're wearing the same masks. Them take plenty of care to cover faces. It's essential that we see those faces. Now, you understand what to do, Randy. 
Yeah? We'll let them take Tonto and me by surprise. We'll put up no resistance. Right. There's less chance of either of you getting hurt that way. Leave the rest to me. You take the front of the house. I'll take the back. I'll let out a whistle when I'm ready. Right. In case of trouble, I don't want Esmeralda to get hurt. Strangers usually make her nervous. Take them out. Reach fast. Get over by that stove. You gentlemen certainly are persistent. You stole all the money I had yesterday. What do you expect to steal today? We'd better tie them up while we're waiting for Doolittle. See if there's some rope in the kitchen. I'll cover them. Right. Only two men know me come here. Newspaper editor and man who worked for him. That who you are, maybe? Why, Engine? You don't think a respectable newspaper editor like Frank Ferris would be involved in a holdup, now do you? Here's all the rope we need. Good. Sit in those chairs. Tie them up. You're gonna need an awful lot of help from the Lord to get out of this mess, Reverend. Sometimes help comes from places where you least expect it. Yeah? Where? Right behind you. Don't try, you'll get the same medicine. Tino, Randy, get their guns. All right, get over alongside your friend. And now, gentlemen, since you so conveniently supplied the ropes, we're going to tie you up and ask you a few questions before we send for the sheriff. Sit down. Keep your eye on them, Randy. Now we know what you look like. Do you recognize them, Randy? Of course. It's Wolf Cady and Jed Glisson. They work for Ferris. That's right. We see this one in Ferris's office. You still deny he sent you? We deny everything. Just because we work for Ferris doesn't mean he sent us here. In that case, we'll have to assume that you two are the masterminds behind these holdups, and that you're willing to assume the full responsibility for them. Well, if we talk, will you see we get a square deal? You'll get justice, nothing more. Shut up. The boss will get us out of this. You're fools to keep protecting Ferris. You'll end up paying for his crimes as well as your own. Why don't you let the Reverend do the preaching, mister? All right, Tonto. It looks as though they don't want to cooperate. It's time to turn them over to the law. Get the sheriff. Me go. Try not to let Ferris get wind of this. If he's in on it, we don't want him making an escape. Me be careful. One word and you're dead. You in there. Your Indian friend's my prisoner and my gun's in his back. Open this door and stand back with your hands up or I'll fill him full of lead. That's Ferris' voice. I'm afraid he's telling the truth for once. I'll take a look. You with a mask. Throw those guns of yours out in the hall. Remember one false move and this Indian's dead. Get over there. Mr. Abner Doolittle, I presume. The old geezer never showed up, boss. Of course not, you fool. There is no Abner Doolittle. What makes you so sure? My newspaper has a complete file on every rich man in America. There's no Abner Doolittle among them. That's when I figured out who you must really be. Only one man would be smart enough to dream up a trap like this. The Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? That's right, Reverend. Only this time he's outsmarted himself. Meaning what? Meaning that you and the Indian and the Reverend have learned too much for your own good. You've left me only one way to be sure you don't ever talk. You mean you'd kill us all in cold blood? As the good book says, Reverend, smite thine enemies. I intend to do just that. I think you'll find it says a good deal more about forgiving thy enemies. And isn't there another passage, Reverend? Something about the Lord sent an angel of vengeance who cried out in a loud voice? An angel indeed. Where is it, Reverend? I don't see it. Does it come in answer to a prayer, or do you have to burn incense and utter magic words? If a man has faith, sometimes all he needs is a magic word to summon help. You better utter the magic words then, Reverend, because your time is about up. Well, I, I don't know any magic words, just prayers. I think you do, Reverend. Why not try something simple like uh, Alakazam? Stick him up. That was no human voice. If you're so sure, why don't you turn around and look? You were right, friend. The Lord does hear magic words, and I know another one. 
Abracadabra. Reach, I said. I think there's somebody behind that curtain, boss. It don't make sense saying them crazy words like Alakazam and Abracadabra. Stick them up. Reach, I said. <laughs> Everyone all right? Couldn't be better. <laughs> well, Esmeralda, we've been together for a long time, but I never thought I'd see the day when you'd come to my rescue. Praise the Lord! <laughs> hey, did you hear that? She finally got religion! <laughs> come on, Esmeralda, praise the Lord! <laughs> I feel a lot braver preaching a sermon than I do publishing a paper. How did I get stuck with this job anyway? Freedom of the press, Randy, is just as important as freedom of religion. That's why I felt we should get out one honest edition of the paper before it closes down. You write editorial, then it be all ready. Yeah, but what'll I say? Say whatever's in your heart, Randy. And save a copy for Tonto and me. We have to go now, but we'll be back again someday. Goodbye. 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 Citizens of Gold City. The godless men tried to destroy us. But the Lord did not desert us in our hour of need. He sent us a man whose name has always struck terror in the hearts of outlaws. A man whose valorous deeds are legion, whose courage is unsurpassed. We shall never forget the name of that man. He's the Lone Ranger. Oh, 